A legend himself, sports columnist and author Mitch Album is in Haiti right now at his Have Faith Haiti Orphanage that he's been running since the 2010 earthquake in Port-au-Prince. He also runs nine other charities under his Say Detroit effort. But even across the world, Mitch, like many of us, feeling the passing of Mike Illich tonight. Mitch, we thank you for joining us. A Detroit giant now gone. Talk about when you first got word of Illich's passing. Well, it was just a couple of hours ago down here. Uh, our kids were lying, ironically, for their nightly devotions. And uh, someone called and said, did you hear that Mike Illich had passed away? Uh, I was incredibly saddened, as everybody was. I can't say I was surprised. Mike has teetered in and out over the course of the last few years. And there were other moments where people thought he was on the verge of going, and then he would somehow surge back, and he'd end up at a game or or uh, show up at the beginning of the season. Um, but I have had the privilege of covering Detroit sports for more than 30 years, and I've covered my shit numbers. There haven't been too many in Detroit because they don't change hands that much. But I can tell you, compared to other owners around the country, uh, rarely has there been a man as beloved, as respected, both by the fans and the players that he employed as Mike. Yeah, and that is most of the sentiment from managers and players that we've been hearing. What a down-to-earth great guy he was to work for. Can you share some of your experiences with him? Well, gosh, there were, there were an awful lot. I, I, I think that Mike Illich was, he was a baseball player, and baseball was always his dream. But I don't think he enjoyed being a baseball owner all that much. I think he much more enjoyed being a hockey owner, and I think he thought, that the way that hockey worked was kind of a family sort of thing and, you know, a little blue-collar attitude and, uh, uh, you know, get the team by the city behind you and the players were all grateful and good guys. I think he thought that it would be like that in baseball. And, I, I, and many times when I've spoken with him, he would roll his eyes and say, well, this baseball thing, I, I tell you, this baseball thing. And it just seemed like it was way too big and too much money and too many rich players with egos. Uh, he loved Detroit and he loved the Tigers. And the Tigers, of course, gave him his first opportunity in sports as a, as a shortstop and second baseman. Uh, and I think he always wanted to sort of see that dream fulfilled. And it's ironic that he did so much better in hockey, which wasn't his sport. He won all those Stanley Cups as an owner. And uh, the one thing he really wanted was a World Series uh, championship. Of course, he got to him, but he didn't win them. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people don't win them. Uh, but, but I do think as, as, a, as an owner... He actually preferred being a hockey team, but I think his heart was in baseball. You know, Mitch, speaking with Jim Leland tonight, he said you wanted to win for Mr. I. He said he was never that guy to call you and tell you who to play. He was just down to earth and just wanted you to do your best. Feels about right, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was. And, you know, a lot of owners will come in and will, you know, uh, chew guys out. They'll come in and they'll chew the manager out. Uh, or they'll come in and they'll want to have the picture taken with, you know, uh, uh, the biggest star on the team. Mike, every time he was in the locker room, somebody had to tell us because he never announced it. You know, you know, did you see that Mike's here? Oh, well, really? Mike didn't know. There he was. You know, Mike wasn't a tall guy, and, and uh, you know, you, you would miss him. You know, he just might be standing there talking to somebody in the corner. But I think it speaks a lot to who he was. But think about people who have left, like Steve Eiserman or Mike Babcock or, or, or people who have been here for a while and then they left. They didn't just walk out. They always would go and have lunch with Mike and Mary and to make sure it was okay, to get their blessing. You know, that's how people who worked for him felt. Like, he was the papa of the family. And even if their careers would take them someplace else, they first had to go get daddy's approval or blessing, and he would always give it. And he would always say, you know, I understand, you know, opportunities arise, but that's a rare thing in sports. Yes, these moments we're seeing on these images are priceless. Mitch, we thank you for taking the time out to join us all the way from Haiti during your effort. Sure thing. And uh, my, my thoughts and prayers to the Illich family, and thanks for the generosity and, and charity work that will, no matter how many words they write about them, about Mike tomorrow, it will never come up to the amount that they have actually done and he has actually done in his lifetime and that his kids are continuing. Mitch Album, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Sure. Our team coverage.